Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be going over how I drew calico cat fur. I used my own cat for a reference photo. Disclaimer: This is how I draw fur and it is in no way shape or form the correct way but it's what works for me and I hope it can help you learn new tricks and techniques. Starting off, I'm going in with my nail dotting tool and I am just embedding the paper where I can see the reflections. The nail dotting tool is a great tool to use when it comes to making fine lines in any type of fur really, but especially cat fur since it's so thin and wispy. The nail dotting tool is a great tool to keep the paper white while you put colored pencil on top. I am now going to go in with cream and I'm going to put a base layer down and once that base layer is down I'm actually going to go back in with the nail dotting tool and embed the paper some more so that way when I layer darker colors on top the cream will show through and so will the white paper. Here's an example of what I'll be doing when it comes to making the fur lines. I use a flick motion, so I press hard at the base and then I flick upward so it's a fine little point at the tip. And I keep doing that and I overlap each line. Some are a little bit more straight, some more curved, and I make sure to rotate my pencil each time I do it. just erasing the pencil lines and then I'm going to go in with my light peach and map in the darker areas for the fur. I'm not pressing too hard here. I'm actually using a very light pressure and I'm just going in with the side of my pencil and mapping in the darker areas. Once that's done, I go in with peach and I make it a little bit more dark. I'm going to go in with sand now to help darken up those shadowed areas and I'm not going all the way through. I'm actually going from where the shadows I can see are and then slightly up into the reflected area. Next I'm going in with light umber, again darkening up those areas. I'm using a flick motion and I'm holding my pencil further back to get a light pressure. I find holding the pencil too close to the tip can cause you to put a harder pressure on the paper. I'm now adding sienna brown into my colors. I didn't realize I needed this color until this moment. This color goes really well with sand and it just helps bring a little bit more of a red tint into the shadowed areas. I'm going in with that flick motion, just overlapping the lines into the light fur area. I'm not pressing very hard at this point because I want to add layers on top. I continue to layer those colors on top of one another until the brown fur meets the black fur. Going in with cream, I am going to map out where the brown fur ends and the black fur begins. I'm just putting down a very light base color at this time. Next, I go in with 10% cool gray and 10% warm gray to map the black fur. I go slightly into the cream as I want those colors and the fur to overlap one another. Doing this will help give it a realistic look. All I'm doing is using the side of my pencil and lightly putting a base color down. Then I'm going to go over that with my nail dotting tool just to help keep that gray stand out. Now going in with sepia and I'm just using it on the edge of where the cream and gray meet. I'm putting this color down for the shadowed areas. Adding some light umber into that and then going over it with 20% warm gray, then again with 70% warm gray and then 90% warm gray and finishing it off with black. 
When going in with your darker pencils, make sure you're looking at your reference photo and also go in the correct fur direction. You want to go in the correct fur direction so you get a more realistic look and it doesn't look flat. I'm just layering my colors together and overlapping it so it blends together smoothly. Going in with cream, I'm mapping in the rest of the brown fur. I'm slightly going into the black fur so that way the fur blends in nice and smooth together. After I put the cream base layer down, I went over it with my nail dotting tool so that way the cream can stay there and it doesn't get lost in the dark shadows. I go in with light peach, peach, beige, light umber, and then the nail dotting tool so those colors also don't get lost in the shadows. Here I'm mapping in the black fur with 70% warm gray and 90% warm gray and I'm making sure that the sienna brown blends together in the black fur as well. Back into the brown fur, I'm layering my colors on top of one another. For most of this, I'm actually going and using the side of my pencil and just adding the shadows in like a shading motion. I don't start adding fur lines until I start adding my light umber, sienna brown, and sepia into the colors. Here you can see how the nail dotting tool helped me out a lot and you can really start to see the fine lines come through. Back into the black fur, I've layered down the grays, the 10% warm and cool gray. Here I'm using light umber and adding it into the darker fur just so that way the colors blend together a little more smoothly. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go back over with my nail dotting tool so that way those colors don't get lost when I add my 70% warm gray, 90% warm gray, and black. I make sure the 70% warm gray actually blends into the brown fur a little more. I even add it into the other side where you can see the shadowed patch just so that way your eye can travel along with it. Continuing blending my colors together, remember to go in the correct fur direction. I'm going in with light umber and I'm actually blending that throughout the whole patch of fur. I go over top and varnish with the cream color and now going into the white fur. If you want to see a full detail of white fur, I actually have a video on my channel, so please go and check it out. I'm starting off with the nail dotting tool and going over the colored areas already into the white patch of fur. I then go over with the 10% cool gray and 10% warm gray and add in the 20% into the shadow fur areas. Here I'm just adding more fine lines that I could see in the reference photo. These are little flyaway fur lines that I felt would help bring the piece together. I'm now going throughout the whole thing and just adding any little details that I think is needed. And I'm even adding 70% warm gray down into the white fur for darker areas. And there's a slight black patch that I could see in my reference photo. Going over, layering all my colors, adding a little bit of a brown patch in the bottom corner. Again, adding little flyaway furs here with 70% warm gray. I'm not using a heavy pressure, using light pressure. 
I'm going throughout the whole thing with black just to darken up any areas that I think needed to be darkened. And going over with all my other colors and just adding any details that I think is needed and then I go over it with white to blend all the colors together. Now very carefully going in with my X-Acto knife I'm actually lifting some of the colors that I've put down to add any more details that I thought was needed. Going in with an X-Acto knife can also help lift any areas that you've gone too dark in and once you're done you can actually go back over top with any colors that you think are needed which I will be doing here shortly. As you can see as I said I'm going back in with my colors just adding very lightly some color back on top and that is it. I hope this video helps you out in any way when trying to create a realistic calico cat. I even hope this video helps you create any patchy different color fur in the future. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing, leaving a comment, and a big like. It will help this channel out a lot. And if there are any other types of fur you'd like to see me draw, let me know down in the comments below. See you in the next video. Bye!